To feed the world's insatiable and growing demand for seafood, China operates as many as 7,000 ships, which make up the largest distant water fishing fleet the world has ever known. China has also built, or runs, more than 90 major ports globally. It has spent billions of dollars across both hemispheres, building processing plants and cold storage facilities, buying fishing licenses and leveraging government influence through development loans. This process has made China the world's undisputed superpower of seafood. But how did this happen, and why should we care? In the last 50 years, global consumption of seafood has risen more than five-fold. Meanwhile, China's distant water fishing fleet is more than 10 times bigger than the next competitor. And China catches, processes, consumes, and exports more seafood than any other country. This matters because seafood is the world's last major source of wild protein and it's an existentially important form of sustenance for much of the planet. Political analysts, especially in the West, say that having just one country controlling this precious resource creates a precarious power imbalance. Navy analysts and ocean conservationists also fear that China is expanding its maritime reach in ways that are undermining global food security, eroding international law, and heightening military tensions. American officials are especially concerned and prone to stoking international alarmism on the matter because the U.S. is in a trade war with China. The U.S. is also the world's largest importer of seafood, most of it coming from China. China has a long history on the water, In the 15th century, during the Ming Dynasty, long before Columbus and his fellow Europeans began making their way to the New World, China possessed a vast fleet of ocean-going vessels, more than 300 ships, some of them the biggest wooden boats ever built. But this period of conquest and exploration contracted less than a century later, as isolationism resulted in a retrenchment so complete that it became a crime in China to go to sea in a multi-masted ship. By the 20th century, up until the late 1980s, the global distant water fishing industry was dominated by three countries, the Soviet Union, Japan, and Spain. These countries roamed the high seas, taking unsustainable amounts of fish from the water. Their behavior was not qualitatively different from what many Western critics fault China for doing now. As such, there is an undeniable hypocrisy in the West criticizing China for its behavior on the world's oceans. What is different now is the scale, the stakes, and the setting. China's fleet is far bigger than anything that came before. The oceans are now depleted. Over a third of the world's fish stocks have collapsed, or are on the verge. And new laws have changed what is allowed at sea. China began restoring its merchant marine, navy, and fishing ambitions in the 1980s, as the state-owned China National Fisheries Corporation sent, in 1985, the country's first modern ocean-going fleet consisting of 13 trawlers with 223 crew to work the coast of Guinea-Bissau in West Africa. More than any other country, China has grown the size of its fleet through state subsidies, which by 2018 had reached $7 billion annually. Ocean researchers consider these subsidies harmful because they expand the size and efficiency of fishing fleets, which further deplete already diminished fish stocks. There are simply too many boats on the water and not enough fish left to target. China bolsters its high seas fleet 
in indirect ways too, including logistical, medical, security, and intelligence support. For instance, it sends its squid fishing vessels a weekly digital index that provides updates on the size and location of the world's major squid colonies. In some patches of the ocean, China sends armed security vessels to protect its fishing boats. Medical support is also provided by vessels like the Zi Pu Yuan 98, a squid jigger that doubles as a floating hospital and is equipped with two doctors, an operating room, a specialized machine for running blood tests, and remote video conferencing capabilities for consulting with doctors back in China. The Chinese government's support of its fleet is vital. More than half of the fishing that occurs on the high seas globally would be unprofitable without these subsidies. And squid jigging is the least profitable of all types of high seas fishing. One of China's big motivations for bolstering its distant water fleet is to safeguard job security for a large industry and to secure a key source of protein for its growing population. Seafood has now surpassed pork among China's burgeoning middle class as the preferred protein source. In the past several years, the Chinese government has taken bold steps to control its fishing fleet. Beijing announced plans in 2017 to cap the global tally of Chinese distant water fishing vessels at 3,000. China has also forbidden squitters from visiting specific high seas fishing grounds during parts of the year and required many bigger ships to have electronic fishing logs, remote video monitoring, and more tamper-proof locational transponders. Still, China struggles to keep track of a fleet that is so large. In 2021, the government seized more than 100,000 three-no fishing vessels, that is, vessels with no port of registry, no name or registration number, and no vessel certificate. But the overwhelming scale of China's fleet has raised concerns about flashpoints across the planet. On the coast of West Africa, hundreds of Chinese industrial fishing boats routinely invade territorial waters. On the South China Sea, some vessels don't even fish. Instead, hundreds of them serve as a kind of civilian militia that works to press China's territorial claims against other nations. And in hotly contested Taiwanese waters, Chinese squid boats pull up massive amounts of catch in a location some military analysts predict will be the site of an armed clash between China and the US. The reason these fishing boats are in so many controversial places is because China's fleet is so large. And as the oceans continue to run out of fish, will likely become a greater source of tension. 